Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever in the world you are. I am in Pokhara, Nepal. Today I want to do a response video and um, I'm going to have to try to stay very chill because there's a lot of things in this video that just makes my blood boil. But I'm going to try to keep it together. So without further ado. Yesterday I was doing the panel show and uh, I mentioned that the apartheid was better than ANC Democrats. Note that ANC Democrats. And most people who dispute that are people who are not there. And some of the people, they come from the homelands where they were oppressed by their own black people. Someone will tell you that they didn't have electricity, but where were you? Because I can tell you, it was not always rosy, but... Okay, so uh, he's specifically talking about black people. So just for those of you who don't know, I'm colored, but uh, sometimes I play white, which I can because, I mean, I am white as well because I'm a mixed race. So whatever the flavor of the day, whatever I look like for the day, I go with that flavor. And if it benefits me to be white for the day, I'll be white. I have never played black because it's a bit very difficult. I mean, you look at him, you look at me, it's a bit... It's a bit difficult. Okay. Anyway, so um, uh, I did grow up during apartheid. Um, 1963 to 1991 consistently and then on and off until 1994. So I would know what I'm talking about. What I won't know what I'm talking about is really what happened in the black townships because I'm colored. We were segregated. I did not live in the black township. I was not allowed to. Blacks were not allowed to live in the colored townships. It was not allowed. And because of the apartheid, we were all very racist. There was no way a black person was gonna be allowed to live in my township that I know for sure. People maybe don't like that, but that is how it was. And on top of that, I'm a bit different because I lived in the richer part uh, well, first of all, a richer township and the richer part in that township. In fact, in my street, we were the only people in the beginning who had a double-story house. I was the only person that would fly uh, on an aeroplane and go out to countries like um, Mozambique. This was in the early 70s. I would fly up and down alone. So my situation is a little bit unique. But anyway, so what he's talking about, um, when he said that uh, these people don't know, well, I know. And then, uh, but like I, disclaimer, like I said, I don't know too much about the black, what happened with black people, but I do know enough to respond to him. Yesterday, I was doing the panel show and... Uh, I mentioned that the apartheid was better than ANC Democrats. Note that ANC Democrats. Okay, now he says that apartheid, well, this is for him, okay? Apartheid was better than ANC democracy. So I don't even think how... Yeah, okay, uh, yeah, I get him because... Um, ANC, on paper, some of their policies are very good. Some are very bad in action. Just 80% bad. There are 20% good things, don't get me wrong. But 80% bad. But also, he said apartheid was better. Now, it's a bit... For me, this is a bit of a strange comparison because apartheid is a crime against humanity. So you are comparing a crime against humanity with democracy. So for me, this is a bit strange. And that a, cry, a, a crime against humanity is better than democracy. 
again, I guess this is his, what he's experiencing. I mean, in his leather jacket, looks like an expensive cardigan, very well-groomed beard. So maybe he's suffering. He's suffering now in the democracy and during the apartheid. He was living his best life, you know. He was just like buying properties wherever he could. He was just marrying people of any race. He could just take any job. He could just attend any school. Um, he could just vote. Um, you know, he had equal rights. So I guess uh, let's hear further what he has to say. And most people who dispute that are people who are not there. And okay, so... I am disputing the fact that a crime of humanity should and can be compared to democracy. That's what I'm disputing. Uh, and um, fun fact, I was there. From 1963 until 1991, consistently, and then between 1991 to 94, just before independence, I went back once every year. So, yep, been there, done that, and I was an activist during school time and at university. So, okay. And some of the people, they come from the homelands, where they were oppressed by their own black people. Someone will tell you that they didn't have electricity, but where were you? Okay, he's talking about the homelands. Because I'm a colored, I did not live in the homelands. I lived in Johannesburg City in a very good colored neighborhood. So I'm a bit unique, very lucky, because my neighborhood was kind of uh, one of the richer and less populated uh, townships and even in the township, I lived in the area that was called New Houses, which was the richer coloreds in that township. And on top of that, my family, this is when my father and mother were still married, we were of the richer people in the community. Um, I mean, I remember in my street where my mother, uh, at one point, for a long time, we were the only people that had a double-story house in that street. There was another double-story house somewhere else. I can't remember. I think it was the Marshman. Anyway, that's another story for another day. And um, so, yeah, I didn't come from the homelands, different upbringing. And uh, what he is talking about and experiencing, of course, will be different from mine because he is a black person who had... Black said it way worse than the other races. And um, so I'm just going to listen to what he has to say and then certain things that I agree with and I don't agree with. So let's go. Because I can tell you, it was not always rosy, but in the townships which were got. Okay, the way he says it was not always rosy. It was liquor, cuck. Just throwing in a swear word there. I don't swear, but I feel for this video, just, you know, it's, it's necessary. Governed by apartheid administrations, things were better than now. Yes, there was segregation, but if you went into a black hospital, you will find all the necessities. If you went to a... Lies, 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 lies. Most of those hospitals did not even have enough beds to accommodate the people. Sometimes you would go to the hospital and the queue for the uh, outpatient treatment was from the gate of Baraguana Hospital to the reception. So, and I know that many times because uh, we had a close, our family doctor was my father's best friend and he would tell us how when he would go on rounds in these black hospitals, which was Baraguana Hospital, uh, most of the time, he, they didn't have the medication, they didn't have the instruments, the place was dirty, overcrowded, and you can't get, you cannot transfer a, an emergency patient to a colored hospital 
or to a white hospital. And I know that because I had an emergency and I was, because I was living in Hillbrow, I was rushed to the Johannesburg General Hospital. All they could do there was stabilize me, but then the ambulance had to take me to the colored hospital in Coronation Ball because as a non-white, I was not allowed to, to be uh, admitted into that hospital. The reason I went to the hospital is, like I said, because Hillbrow, the Johannesburg General Hospital, people who know that area, it's the closest hospital. It's maybe, what, five kilometers? But no, they at least they stabilized me. Now, what my doctor friend, our doctor friend told us, in the black hospitals, there is no way you would have even been able to, to get away with what I did. I got away with it is because when I got there, they didn't realize I was colored. They treated me. And because while my boyfriend was signing, the, he's white. While he was signing the, 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 the registering me, he had to, to give my ID number. In the ID number, the last few number states what, what ratio. Only when they found out I was a colored, then they decided that the, the ambulance has to take me to the other hospital. And fun fact, because he's white, you can ride in, in, the, in the ambulance with me. Although it was their ambulance, the white ambulance, the people, the, the medics in the ambulance were white, but my boyfriend couldn't because he's white. So go figure. So I don't know how that is better, but maybe he had a different experience or maybe he has different um, expectations and standards to mine. Because to mine, to me, how... Baraguana hospital or just black hospitals or even just colored hospitals were conducted during the apartheid was bad. Now, it is still bad, maybe worse, but why is it worse? Because people are not taking care of it. That's all. It's got nothing to do with that apartheid was better. It's got to do with who is in charge there now? They're not doing their job. That's all. Every hospital has their, their administration. Who is supposed to take care of these things? So I don't know how, uh, but this is South Africans. During the apartheid, everything was blamed on the apartheid. Now everything is blamed on the ANC. South Africans never look at themselves. They don't do this. They should learn from the Chinese. The Chinese always do this. When they talk about themselves, they do this. They don't do this, they do this. So South Africans should adopt this. The hospitals are in the crappy state they are in because of the people, not the government. Because if the government gives funds, fix it. If they don't give funds, get the funds from them. Force them to give the funds. That's how it works. We are the people. We choose and control the government. The government doesn't control us. That is how democracy works. Which again is the other thing because maybe people don't understand how democracy works. South Africans are not sophisticated enough to understand what democracy is. Democracy is the people. The people control the government. <sighs> the black school. You'll find all those things that you needed to find. Let me Lies, lies, lies. Black schools, you find all the things you needed to find. Did you know that white schools, people got free books? My white friends tell me, your books were free, right? Your textbooks. Colors, our textbooks were also free. Sometimes they were secondhand, sometimes they were new, but at least they were free. Blacks had to buy their own textbooks with their own money. Their own money. So go figure how that was better. How many students were in a class? Because those days, black students, doesn't matter how rich you were, you couldn't choose to go to another school. You have to stay in the black school. You cannot decide you have a lot of money and you're going to Marriott's Brothers. No, nope, didn't work like that. Colors, yes, we could do that. Indians, we could do that because we were a little bit special. We were only second class. Blacks, you were not even featuring. You were like zero class. Third class did not even feature. So those days, there were what, 100, 120, six-year-olds in, in grade one? 
because there was nowhere else to go. Now, if there are 120, 20, uh, uh, six year olds in one class, why? It doesn't make sense because now they are free to go to any school they want to. Any, any school. There is no restriction you can go to colored schools or Indian in the Indian area, the white area, because we don't even have that kind of areas anymore. Now anyone can live anywhere and anyone can go to any school. So why are there still these problems in the black schools? Why? Again, because everyone's sitting back blaming the government. Where are the parents? Where's the committee? Where is the, 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 the community committee, the township committee? Why are they not doing anything? <laughs> break it this way. Education. There were schools. Zama Amba, Atchison, Technical Colleges, Abu Vista, designated for black people, but it was there. You go to some of the urban, you know, homelands, under apartheid, like Abu Natal, you'll find universities of Fort Hare. You go to Bosso Shangu, Bosso there were you know, facilities, infrastructure, that's why in a town. Yes, there were all these facilities for black people, all these uh, institutions of higher education. There was, there was, but no 12. They were only for black students and only in black areas. No other student of a different color or different race could go, could attend those universities and black students could not attend any university that was for coloreds only or coloreds and Indians because they normally put together or for whites. Zero. If you were exceptional or you were, it was an exceptional uh, course, like I did ballet. So there are a few black students who were allowed there, but all of us non-whites, we had to have special permits at UCT Ballet School at the University of Cape Town because it is a white university. I actually wanted to go to Stellenbosch University to go study uh, medicine. I was not admitted because I'm non-white. It's a white only university. Now, any person in South Africa can go to any university any so i don't know what he's talking about that those days they had these this yeah they had but now they have even more because now they can go anywhere so what's stopping them from attending these universities and on top of it blacks there's affirmative action you don't even have to be intelligent you don't even have to meet the entry a criteria to enter the university they've lowered the standard like to nothing to level of stupidity for, for blacks to enter. So why are they not going? Why are they not going? What has the ANC got to do with whether you attend a university or not? Apartheid didn't stop me from attending a white only university. No, it didn't. I worked my butt off and got in there. And I was not even on a colored affairs bursary. My parents paid for it, but then that's because the government decided that my parents are rich they can afford it why, why can't why can't they do that before they maybe had 10 universities in the whole of south africa that black people could attend now they can attend any and every university in south africa <laughs> on ship we find a qualified plumber a qualified technician a qualified electrician Is of what her you go to was social move, it was through her. There were you know facilities, infrastructure. That's why in a township we find a qualified plumber, a qualified technician, a qualified electrician, somebody who could fix cars with a certificate, and that person did a proper job, trained for free. Mahala go near. Reality check, check, little man, in your lovely, expensive uh, leather jacket. You still find these these people. 
And you don't just find them in the townships, you find them everywhere in South Africa. Because like I said before, now you are not restricted to the townships only. You find these people everywhere in South Africa. You want a plumber? Type there in the internet, it will come up. You want an electrician, it's there. So what are you talking about? You know what he's talking about? He said there, and you could find it for Mahal. Mahal means for free. Because that's what non-whites like. They don't want to pay. They want everyone, everything Mahal. That's the problem. That's why they want apartheid back. Because during the apartheid, we all st stuck together because we had no choice. So we were all looking out for each other. I remember my, my brother, my late brother Ambrose, he was an auto elect electrician and a mechanic. And he was very sought after because he specialized in, 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 in sports cars. And he worked for this Italian uh, and French uh, people in, in, in that time, Jepistown, which is now what Maboneng. And um, he was so sought after because he was so skilled. And uh, he'd work there and he'd earn big bucks because, you know, these are Italian and French. They're not South Africans. They don't care what color you are. He's doing a good job. They pay him what he has to, to get. And then when he would come back to the township, people in the township would ask him to fix their cars. And then they would not, they would be like, ah, you do for Mahal. I mean, you know, you know, as bushies, you know, we are, we are bushies. We must help each other out. There was this thing. And he didn't mind because, yeah, we were all looking out for each other. Those days are over. Now, everyone is free to do whatever they want. No one has to look out for anybody because now it's it's a dog eat dog world. Everybody has to care for themselves. That is democracy. That is the beauty of democracy. Is that you have to be independent. You can be as successful as you want to be or you can be as useless as you want to be. The choice is yours. But because we still have this mentality. No, oh, because we're so used to being controlled, oppressed, being told what to do, being told where we can go, being told who we can love, who we can marry, where we can live, what jobs we can do, what school we can go to, what subjects and courses we can, we can, we can only study. That's the mentality that a lot, of, a lot of South Africans have. And I'm sorry to say a lot of my own friends You swear we, we come from different planets, but again, maybe I'm unique because, like I said, I lived in that kind of township, and then when my mother and father got divorced, my mother's boyfriend was white. Very illegal, caught for immorality act many times, it didn't matter. I was raised by a white man, so probably I was living in an interracial, illegal uh, family setup. Everything about what I was doing was illegal, but uh, maybe that's why I'm different from my friends. I don't have this mentality that apartheid was better. But anyway, I'll get into that later. We found those things. Art schools, they were everywhere. Go through Bafunda Center. Every township had a hall. Sports stars were produced along the Tennis players. Cyclists, Amakarateka, movie stars up to international level like Abu Zix Mugai, Ken Camp. Okay, yeah, when he talks about every community had a recreational center, I know with the Color Township, yes, not, not all, of course, I don't think Clips Prater had there to share, I think, with Eldorado Park. But I don't know about the blacks, but if he says they had, then they had. Again, what is stopping them from having it now? All that your township committee has to do is to Ask for one, send in the documents, get the funding. If they get the funding, build it. If they don't get the funding, get it from the community. There's a lot of businessmen who will donate. Business people, I should not just say men, sorry. I'm being so sexist. That will donate. Why can't they do that? What's stopping them from doing that? We are free now. We can do that. Before we couldn't. We had to wait for Bantu affairs or colored affairs to, 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 to tell us what we can do. Now you don't. You can do it yourself. And you can build it anywhere. It doesn't just have to be in a township. It's again, it's this township mentality. 
typical township mentality. It's also because South Africans don't travel. Some of them have not even been to Zimbabwe or Lesotho or Swaziland. Where people, like especially Lesotho, Eswatini, Mozambique, no, not Mozambique so much, Eswatini, Lesotho, Zambia, Tanzania, these places where blacks have always been free. They are so different from South Africans. The mindset, Botswana. Botswana, the people in Botswana, you can see these are people that born free. They don't have this chip on their shoulder and this crap in their heads. But of course, South Africans don't travel. If they do, they go to Europe. Of course, you cannot compare Europe because Europe is, is, is a different, different uh, ideology, different, um, uh, what do you call it, different culture. Same with US. They travel to these countries. No, travel in Africa. Travel in Africa, my friend. And I don't know why he's talking so much. Like, again, look at his jacket. He's loving his jacket. I know people are going to get upset because I keep talking about his jacket, but loving it. So it looks good. I'll leave him that. I'm going to make a produce during apartheid. You go to hospitals. Like, Paraguana. General. Okay, he's talking about Maria Makeba who produced wonderful music. Yeah, the thing also about being creative, I don't know if people know, know this or they've observed this. People who are oppressed are very creative. Very. Because the creativity is an outlet. But of course, now what songs are we going to sing now? That time was nice. We could sing about the apartheid struggle, Amandla Awetu, Anazania, One Nation, the Portuguese Aluta Continua, like in, 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 in Cuba, Cuba Libre. Yeah, we can f all these um, freedom songs, all this po poet, the poetry. We can create all these uh, theater productions. We can create all these dance, the dance choreographies because we are oppressed. Oh, yeah, I need to show. <laughs> now, what can we do? What do we do now? Come down, style. <laughs> All this pana, na, 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 pana. Because why? We're not oppressed. We're happy. Happy people don't create very profound works. They just create things that make you feel good. But again, nothing is stopping people from creating. So I don't know what is his issue is. There is absolutely nothing that is stopping artists in South Africa from creating new works. Nothing. There's no law. During the party, there were laws. Like, remember the movie Busman and Liana that was uh, censored and because uh, he's a Busman and she's a Liana. You know, he's Bushman colored or whatever and, she, and she's white. But movies like To Serve With Love was banned because white man, a uh, black man, white woman, anything that shows uh, people, revolutions, people standing up against the government, any artwork, movies, anything about this was all banned. So what is he talking about? Now those things are not banned. You can do whatever you want to do. The only thing you cannot do is use that word kafir. I'm using it here. YouTube, you can censor me. People, South Africans, you can. That word we all know is now banned. It's banned. He wants to go back to that time where people could say that word the way I said it now. And just fun fact, that word means, it's an Arabic word, it means non-believer. I made a whole video about that, so South Africans go and watch that video because you all need to reclaim that word and stop letting that word chain you. <laughs> I'm so offended by that word. It just means you're an atheist. There's nothing wrong in being an atheist. It's quite trendy these days to be an atheist. Look at how people on my YouTube ch channel are all against me because I'm not an atheist. So to be a kafir these days is cool. What's the big deal? But just a reminder, now we cannot use it. So I don't know what, he wants to go back to that time when I can look him in the face and call him back. He wants that time back. But then, like I said, he has a different experience from, from me. So. Uh, they produced was no shortage of medication. Lies, lies, lies. There was a lot of shortage of medication for non-white people. 
Why are you lying? You guys who had issues with medications at hospitals, my mother died because they misdiagnosed her at Coronation Bill Hospital. I don't know who told her to go there because she had enough money to go to a private hospital, but I don't know, maybe she decided to, to leave the money to us in our world, which she did. Uh, they, they misdiagnosed her when she went for the, fir the first time. They gave her the wrong medication, and then later they said because they did not have the medication that was needed for her, they did not have it on that day. Lies, lies, lies. Road infrastructure. Let's see in Joy today. Produce during a battle. Okay. Road infrastructure. Yes. In the Johannesburg city itself. On the highways. Anywhere where all the white people had to go and foreigners when they come. Beautiful. First of all. The minute you hit the non-white townships. Hi, Sukawena. They're proud like a cock. I don't know how old this guy is, but I don't think we lived in the same time during the apartheid. Because I have a very different experience. I used to work in Guguletu, in Soweto, because, you know, I was doing my activism in Soweto, all undercover stuff. Still doing it. Um... So, sorry, the cat is all over the place. So, yeah, I really don't know why, where this guy is coming from. <sighs> anyway, may God in heaven help us. A date. We had our own things. Yes, we had our own things because the white man didn't want us to use their things. Duh! Our own humanity, our own churches that we owned. Where uh, did we own the churches or did it belong to the government? I don't know. Or did it belong like the Catholic Church? Does it belong to a specific person or does it belong to the government or does it belong to the actual Catholic organization, the Vatican? I don't know. I wouldn't know. Because, but... Yes, you know, apartheid, everybody, there was churches everywhere. Whether we owned it, like I say, I don't know. Hello, in 2023, there are churches all over South Africa. And you are free to attend any church. There is no church where you go to and they say, Blancas Gelienlet. Is that the right word? I can't even speak Afrikaans anymore. Or whites only. There's no such thing. Anybody can go to any church. So what is he complaining about? This is what I don't understand. How people like him, they prefer to have three things and you are restricted to only having the right to use those three things. Rather than having many things and you are free to choose any of the many things. But then, sorry, this cat, but then maybe, like I say, I was raised differently. I had different circumstances. So, I don't know, maybe my mindset is just different. I'm just more exposed to things. I don't know. People are not, you know, robbed made to kiss snakes we had our own things okay yeah people were not robbed i don't know about in the black town shows but with colors yeah crime rate was very low but again i say because we were community and those days we had filial piety and we respected elders respected the law we had to respect the law because those days if you were non-white and you vandalized property that white policeman will come and catch you and you will be put in jail. They were very fast. You cannot damage their property. And everything that we had belonged to them, not to us. 
So I don't know what he's talking about. But just so we all know this, it was the pro if you vandalize the property of the government, you were in big, big trouble. And uh, so this was good. This, yes, robbery, well, I don't know, in, in, in my township, robbery was quite bad and crime because remember they had the, what was that guy? Oh, I can't remember because my brother was friends with him. The gangsters, maybe you had the fast guns, they went to the other township, the fast guns and the, there was another and they were always fighting and then the one guy lived in Malay, in, in, so in, in Rivoli and he actually got killed eventually and then there was the Colomo kids and yeah, there was gangsterism. There was robbery, but not as bad as today, as, as now in South Africa. Because also those days, we no, non-whites were not allowed to have guns. Only white people, not non-whites. So there's that. So I think he wants to go back to that also where maybe, which I agree with him, that the police, they have to be a little bit more draconian in their responses to crime. That I agree with him. They actually have to be draconian, like the white apartheid police were. They didn't play around. You'll be put in jail for five years for stealing a car tire. Hmm. So maybe they should be more draconian. I agree with that. Okay. Businesses, movie theaters, we had those things. Yes, we had businesses, we had movie theaters, but again, our businesses could was restricted to only certain areas, and then we could also only have certain types of businesses and only certain, uh, like I say, in certain areas. And then also, we did have movie theaters, but again, the movie theaters were only allocated for your race in certain areas, and only certain people could own it. For colors, we had in Fordsburg for Coloreds and Indians. And these movie theaters were owned by Indians because they have money. Coloreds don't have the incentive to have these kind of things. My father and Mr. Marshman, we used to run movie theaters out of our homes. Every Saturday, Friday, Wednesday, Friday and Saturday, my father, we would clear all the dining, the dining room because we had a very big dining room, cleared out. We could put 50 chairs and that time it was a projector and we would show films. And just so you know, my father was famous for showing porn because that time porn was illegal in South Africa. So there's that. Uh, but in, this is my biological father. Uh, yeah, so you see, so, and then we, they, they used to show movies at the, 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 at the, the recreational, Rivoli Recreational Center in the big hall there. But Fordsburg, they had these three, I can't even remember. How can I not remember? I used to be there every, when I had no ballet class. Every Saturday, my friends and I were there. First, we go to the Oriental Plaza, and then we go to watch the movies. We used to go to the Oriental Plaza because we used to like to fool around with the Indian boys. Prakash and Pradeep and you name it. You know, those were the Hladis. I love them hardest ones with the three eyes. But anyway, then we would go to the movies and then we would sometimes even just lie to our parents because we actually didn't go to the movies. We were just with the pretty Indian boys in the Oriental Plaza. But I digress because the point of this is that, yes, we did have our own movie theaters, but again, maybe like in Rivoli, there were none. In Fordsburg, there were like maybe three. In the townships, the black township, maybe Soweto, there were four. But now, there are movie theaters all over, and you can attend any of them. Any of them. So when before, when we had three, we now have maybe 3,006. No, it won't be that much. Let's say just in, in Johannesburg, you might have, I don't know, 300. So if you have to choose between two and 300, I think I'd go with the 300. But again, for me, it was not a big problem because like I said, I used to play white. So I used to go to any movie theater at any time with all my, with my whatever white, white boyfriend of flavor of the day I was with. So there's also that. Like I say, I had different experience. And then people who've never lived under apartheid, they will tell you otherwise. People who lived 
you know, oppressed by their Bantu stand leaders. So you know what I'm talking about. I know about it. I've been inside and up. Okay, yeah, I know he's talking about the Bantu stats. Bantu stats. Uh, it's a state. It was like Bantu states. Was like example. Uh, I used to work in those states, like um, Baputswana, Transkei, and Tabancho. I I lived in and I lived and worked in these states. So yes, I do understand when he says the people who, who lived in these Bantu states they didn't under, really understand apartheid. That is because these Bantu states had um, they were kind of uh, autonomous. So. People, they were more free. I mean, there was no, like, there's no apartheid because it was run by the people of that state, which were all black. And so, of course, if you live there, people, the, the only reason they, they would leave the state is like, they go to, to South Africa to do shopping. Because let's face it, in the whole of Southern Africa, everybody goes to South Africa, whether you're from Eswatini, Mozambique, whatever, they all go to South Africa to shop. And even in their countries, most of their products are South African products in their shopping centers. But for daily living, they lived in the Bantu states and there was no apartheid because it's a, it's a black population and it's governed by black people. So they were like free. They knew the freedom. And that's why I loved working in those, in those states because there was no apartheid. So he's right that they cannot really understand apartheid you you must have lived under apartheid and this is why i don't understand how a lot of people even friends family members that i know don't understand what apartheid really means they, it's like why would you not want equal rights why would you not want to be treated as an equal why would you want to be treated as inferior to the white person and I think this is because a lot of them, maybe they work with white people, but just, you know, when you work, it's just kind of at that level. But they've not really lived with white people. They don't really have white friends uh, who care. They, they care for them and the friends care back, back. They don't have white family. They don't have white, um, they've never been in relationships with white people like with men or women like in an intimate relationship so they do not understand that the color of your skin does not determine your worth as a human being so to them they've always they always have this thing that everything that's white is better And like I say, because maybe because I've always been with white people, I, I've never seen white people as better. I've just seen them as people. Some of them were better than me in character or in skill or in achievements, but it, they were never better than me. I've never considered them better when it comes to my self-worth. Some of them were worse than me, worse situation, even poorer. They came from a poorer family than what, even during the apartheid, than when I came from, they were less educated, less exposed. I mean, I traveled. They were less exposed than me. So they spoke real rubbish. You know, uh, they were, some of them were even like, honestly stupid, but it doesn't matter. So I, my point is that maybe people have this, uh, this attitude because some, um, and mentality because maybe and that's why he says you know we had everything is in our township we had this is because maybe these kind of people they were just in they just stayed in their township so like my brother my late brother used to say a uh, township gedachtes. they just stay in this little bubble so they only mix with those people uh and as long as they good as long as they have their bm in as long as they have a double story with a big flat screen tv with one dog and one cat and a budgie and um, that can swear in Afrikaans, uh, your master, you know. And then uh, they have uh, a BMW, the wife has a BMW, the, the, the husband has a W and the BMW and then they, they're just happy because in typical, I don't know about the black people, but like in the colored uh, mentality, in typical colored fashion, uh, it's a whole living up to the Joneses uh, 
situation. You know, we have a pool. Oh, now they have a jacuzzi, so we also have to have a jacuzzi. They're all about, about holding the blank and boa. Boa blank on a stunk. That means uh, the, they like the bling, you know, like like uh, on top it blings, but underneath it stinks. It stinks. They have this attitude and living living up skull. That means always in debt. Never buying things cash. They have everything, but they have no money. That's why they don't travel. Because where's the money to travel? Because you're so busy living this lifestyle that is not even to, to for your benefit, but it's to impress the neighbors. But anyway, so I, and I think this guy is what he's talking about. It seems like with the black community, they have the same same type of uh, mentality. But I know apartheid. I've been inside an apartheid jail. Apartheid had shots and fire bullets at me. I know friends who died during apartheid. Yeah, and a lot of us also know that. You're not alone. Schools were proper. Whatever that white people had, we also had our own. I don't know. I think this guy... I don't know what drug he's on, but it's not doing, it's not working for him. Uh, whatever white people had, we had our own. No, we didn't. White people had the right to vote. We didn't. White people were the superior race. We didn't have that classification. We had the classification of inferior race. White people had freedom. We didn't have freedom. So, I don't know how you can compare material things to your worth as a human being. I just don't understand that. And it actually saddens me that people think like that. It just shows that we've not evolved since the time when the white man did come to South Africa. And he showed us maybe two mirrors and a bottle of whiskey and said, I give you these two mirrors and a bottle of whiskey and you give me the entire Cape province. And we were just like, yes, my boss, yes! Look, we got things. We got things. It's like we are still stuck. The way he's talking, it seems that we are still stuck in this unevolved stage where it is more about bling bling things than about the things that really matter. The things that's about human dignity. But on the other hand, I understand this because this is a very colored thing. I know. And it seems like it's also a black thing because remember, he's black and colored. We're two different races. We were segregated. We grew up. I don't know anything about, well, I know a little bit about what went on in the black communities. He might know a little bit about what goes on in the colored communities. But it seems that we kind of have the same thing where we are quite willing to settle just to have the things and have and in exchange for our, our dignity, our worth as human beings. We seem to be quite happy. Even though it was not a power. Mm. I'm a pools, like about Jake, you know, with the three townships, maybe they are sharing one swimming pool, Olympic size, boxing house, even beer houses, because they need that one much. We had those things. Yeah, we had to share those things. So why, why uh, was that better than now when those days, three townships maybe had to share one Olympic size swimming pool? Now, three townships can share any Olympic pool in any part of the country as they please. Again, 
You want to compare one and let's say just in Johannesburg, 20. So you rather want to have one swimming pool that you, you have to go, that you are restricted to, to use than to have a choice of 20 swimming pools. <sighs> I don't know. I give up. We had our own Miss Black South Africa. Everything that white people had, we also had. It was separate development. Why should we have a Miss Black South Africa? Why can't we just not have Miss South Africa? Who the hell cares what color her skin is or what her race is? Why should we go back to that time when it was, everything was based on the color of your skin? Why should we have that? What is wrong with you? Who the hell wants to have a Miss Black South Africa? We just want to have Miss South Africa. Finish. Clar. Sack. Today there is none. We had jobs. We had business people. I'm about my club. Okay, we had jobs. So this one is a bit strange to me because I see that the unemployment rate is very high in South Africa. And when I try to Google search to compare before 1994 to now, it's not very clear. So I'm waiting for my friend from the from UNISA to send me uh, some articles, you know, like scholar, scholastic, is that the word? I forgot. Yeah, scholastic um, articles on research that has been done on this. Because um, I think why people think or why we did have jobs that time is because we didn't have so many illegal immigrants in the country. Number one. So because of course now there's more people. Also now we have less jobs in South Africa because a lot of companies left South Africa. So of course when there's less job companies there's less job opportunities. So you have Less job opportunities, but more people, because there's a lot of illegal people. During the apartheid, this was not apparent because maybe also there was no proper documentation of unemployment, because who cares about non-white people, what's going on with them? And also because there was job restrictions, because if, if you were of a certain race, you could only apply for certain jobs. Like non-whites could not be, example, air stewardesses or pilots. It was out of the question. Or be uh, army officers. Um, just to name a few jobs. I can't think of others. Uh, in the business sec sector, sector, like look, like my, my mother. My mother had to work in credit control because in her company, she was not allowed to work as a CA, a chartered accountant. It's, it's only for white people. Certain jobs are only for white people. So this one I'm really not clear about, so I don't, really don't want to talk a lot about it, but I do know he is right that, he's not right, I don't think, well, I don't know whether he's right about whether during the apartheid we had jobs. I don't know. I really don't know because I know a lot of people during the party who didn't have jobs and also know that during the party a lot of people would do any job. People would be maids and dustbin boys and tea girls and gardeners. They would do all these non-skilled, semi-skilled work, labor work. They were mining and it didn't bother them. Now, they would not do that those work that job even if they have no education or very little education they really have no means at all but they will not go and do those jobs whereas before the government kept them in that category so that they have no choice but to do those jobs now because there's choice they choose to rather loaf be unemployed smoke dacha on the corner take drugs etc instead of taking those kind of jobs that's degrading but anyway, so, but to be honest with you, I'm not, like I said, I'm waiting for 
the articles to come in, then I can comment uh, like really in detail. Also, for song, every township go keep full name. Every township there was, you know, it's like on that one. People were driving about Java, XJ type, BMW, on a You see, for non-white South Africans, as long as you're driving a cool car. To hell with the rest of your, your your worth as a human being. All that determines you are a worthy human being is that you must have bling. That's it. Never mind that you are sanctioned, you cannot take part in the Olympics because your country is involved in a crime of humanity, that there's a cultural boycott, that there's your country sanctioned, it's totally isolated from the rest of the world, you can't travel anywhere, your South African passport, you are like a pariah because you have a South African passport. Never mind all this, that's not a big deal. Because as long as you have bling, life was good and better than what it is now. Because now, there's no sanctions, there's no cultural boycott, you can travel wherever you want, South Africans are not pariahs. So now, it's a problem because now there's competition and now you have to make choices and now you can't blame the apartheid if you cannot succeed. Now you only have yourself to, to, to be blamed. So yeah, I understand then why apartheid was probably better for some people. Some people do not like to take self-responsibility and self-accountability. Ah, seems to make sense. Mind, not cold mind, cold houses, summer warehouses. We have those things, but things are my last. During a bad date. Hmm? Uh, we still have that. What your most on? Produce during a bad date, but I don't know what Oh my lord, child. What case I'm the womb? They were there owning our teams. It was tough, but we had those things. How's he keeps saying we had those things? We still have those things. It's just that now it's not just you who have it or me in my township who have it. Now we all have it together. And whoever wants to take it can take it and have it and participate in it or not. That's the big, that is the biggest difference. And you don't appreciate that. You'd rather just have things for yourself. That is what you are saying to hell with the rest of the people. You want the Olympic size swimming pool just for yourself. And your people. We live in the rainbow nation, my friend. We are not a segregated country anymore. Houses. Your people were buying houses. Your people were renting. But they will fix your toilet, your windows, everything. 99 year lease. People are still buying houses. People are still renting houses. Toilets and stuff can still be fixed. And they are still fixed. What are you talking about? What, what, what is he talking about? I have never lived in someone's house now in, since the apartheid because I go back as much as I can. I even lived in, now when I was there, I rented my own little place there. Everything was fixed, and when something was broken, I called the guy to come fix it. So I don't know what he's talking about. I lived with my brother. Everything in his house is working tip tops. I go to my friends' houses, uh, things that are broken. I see them fixing it. I see them renovating. What is he talking about? And what is South, uh, South Africans? We can't, uh, uh, and we cannot do anything for ourselves. Uh, we need the white man. We need a parchment back because we don't know how to survive. We can. Uh, what is happening? Sir. But after 99 years, you own the house. Hmm. There were limitations. But in whatever spaces that we found ourselves, we were thriving. Even today in South Africa, you can find a space and you can thrive in it. You know how you do that? You do this. You point at yourself. 
yes, I know there's certain things that the government uh, is not doing, and we know this, we know this, we don't have to go over that. We are now talking about this man in this beautiful jacket at his level complaining about these things. Okay, that's what we're talking about here. Yes, they were poor people. And you would be arrested for not working. Like in any society. Yeah, I don't know about uh, people getting arrested for not working, so I cannot comment on that because... I've never heard of that. Well, maybe in the black townships, but not in the colored townships. Now! But again, I think getting arrested for not working is also not right because we are not living in, com in a communist country. It's a democracy. So I think maybe he, he is a socialist or communist. This is what I think. It's not even that he's a pro-apartheid. I think he's probably a communist where he wants the state to rule. <sighs> Just came to mind. Yeah. This is very communism kind of where everything gets blamed on the, the state, the government, and that the state has to control and rule and everything and provide. Yeah, because I was in Cuba recently and this is exactly how it was. And I remember when I was in Russia as well when the some people were talking about the good old communist days where they didn't have to think. They didn't have to worry about food and stuff because, you know, there's rations and stuff like that. Mm, okay, so actually, you know, this guy, is, it's not even so much about party. It's about he wants communism. So now you guys have to tell me which political party in South Africa is, uh, is uh, pro-communism. There are poor people everywhere. Everywhere, the only people who are thriving are politicians and Zionist dogs. Now, I know a lot of people who are thriving. I'm not going to mention them here, but I know who they are in South Africa. They're thriving. And I'm telling you, if I had to live in South Africa, I would thrive. I know that. Because I just looked in LinkedIn. On LinkedIn, there's a lot of jobs. It's just that I'm too uh, proud to take certain jobs. But there's a few jobs. I've seen them. And I can start my own business. Thinking about it. Spoken to a few friends of mine saying that I might come back to South Africa to do that. So I think if you're not thriving, and then again, what is thriving? Thriving to you might mean you need all the bling, 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 and to the next person it might mean a nice three-bedroom house, three-bedroom house in a quiet township. car that rides, nice job surrounded by your family. That's thriving. So. And then someone's going to tell me, what you know, what is he talking about? We had electricity, so we to Orlando. Yes, you know, the oil out to me was not as fast. Lies, 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 lich stories, lich back. Maybe you had electricity in Soweto. Like, I had electricity in the part of Ravali that I stayed in. Because remember, we are the rich people. Did you know that it says here, during the apartheid era, before the electrification program, an estimated 98% of all white households had electricity. 80% of black households lacked it. So my friend, be thankful that you are one of those black people who had electricity. Because I can tell you, every black person I knew did not have electricity. And a lot of my school friends who sat next to me in class, they lived in a colored township and they never had electricity. The first time they had electricity was in 1994. So I don't know what lies you are talking about. It's a disgrace that you are lying like this. And I hope people were, because I only have this part of the, the video, I hope people were, were giving it to him for talking such crap. I can bring all my friends who lived in Rivoli Extension, my friends in Clipsproit, in Kersisdorp, in Western some parts of nuclear, 
Runfontein that will tell you they had no electricity. And I know because I've been to their homes. I've been to their homes. My own uncle, because of the candle, well, now they think eventually they found out it was arson, but they burned to death, seven of them, because of no electricity. There was no electricity. People used to use candles. So, sack your prat nonsense. But people, the Baba Zut was at December. What was Monday? Was a Friday? Nobody. Christmas is not every day. Ah, We had those things during the era of exit makeup. Abu Verali goes every township under apartheid. Remember, we had four provinces. Nama Bantu stand homelands, and I can tell you, even those Bantu stands. Like Abu Putatswana, they were better than now. Abu Kaze then, better than now. Yes, but Putatswana was better than now because but Putatswana is a small little Bantu state. So, and Sun City was in Putatswana. And Sun City, them, they helped a lot with taxes to support that state. Small state, small population, easy to control, easy for everybody to live well. Now, the money has to be shared. Like, hello? Mathematics? Now, the Pago Toyando, the so called puppets, they govern this country better than this ANC democracy. When I'm saying. Yeah, um, the people in the Bantu states, yes, they did govern uh, better than the ANC. But again, it could also just be because it's a smaller. Like I said. Let's look at Brunei, example, Monaco. Easy to, to Singapore. When you have small population, easy to, to manage and also easy to control. And you can run a dictatorship there because it's not that obvious. Uh, yeah, but uh, he, I agree. The way the ANC democracy is been implemented, the way the country has been run, etc., we all know it's bad. We talk about it 24-7. I think it doesn't have to be, we don't have to keep going on and on about it. It's now, it has reached the, the point where we do something about it. Complaining all the time just doesn't help. Just do something. So, but I do agree with him that INC is not doing a good job. Apartheid was better than this ANC Democrats. I'm not saying it was good, but it was better. It was not good as far as I'm concerned, and it was not better as far as I'm concerned. And I've already stated my reasons in the beginning, but then that's just me. Like I said, um, I value freedom from oppression, freedom from white domination, equal rights, uh, recognition, acknowledgement as a human, and a, 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 a human, a worthy human being. That's what I value. Above electricity, food, infrastructure. I value that above all of that. So, and I say, I can say that this is true, that I believe, because I left South Africa where I was living a first world existence because I was play white. And you know, the whites were living first world existence in South Africa in 1990. I left there to go live in Malaysia, which when I moved there was like the third world. And then there's just not people. There's just not a world. They were in the just not a world situation. But I moved there because at least there I had freedom and I had worth. I was considered a worthy human being. So. Imagine that. And I'm telling you, I will not lose this debate. Even if losing a way to pay for your life expenses for the rest of my life, I will take that. I think you will lose the debate on the grounds that you are talking a lot of nonsense uh, when it comes to just the facts about the situation 
that the situations that you are mentioning here. There's where you will lose the debate. You will win in saying that um, ANC de democracy is not good. You will lose by saying apartheid was better. But again, you might win because a lot of white people will totally agree with you that apartheid was better. And there will be people like you and some other stupid idiots from the colored and Indian community who will agree with you that apartheid was better. But I think in overall and even in the global world, you will lose this debate because in the global world, apartheid is a crime against humanity. And under no circumstances will it ever be, no to everybody, be allowed to be implemented in a country as a new system. You can do it, but be prepared that you will be ostracized from the rest of the world, you will be separated, there will be sanctions and trade embargoes and many things. And I don't know which country can survive this. Well, Israel is a different matter, but I don't want to go into that right now. But I'm just talking about if you look at the world, where we stand today. Crimes against humanity is just not tolerated. So I think South Africans have to wake up to this fact and put the apartheid was better, blah, 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 all the good old days. You have to put that to rest. Because even if our people said, yeah, we want it, and it comes back, the rest of the world is not going to accept it. And I don't know, I don't think we can survive without the rest of the world. We tried. The white people tried. They failed. That's why they had to, to when the referendum, they voted yes in the referendum for change, because they also knew there's just no way. And they knew it's wrong. There's a lot of good white people. They knew it was wrong. That's why even they decided, nah, this is enough. We cannot be a part of this inhumane treatment of human beings. No way. Because remember, we are free today. Also, or I would say mainly because of white people. Because if they voted no, it would have stayed no. And then we would have had to have a revolution. And then we would have been in a worse state. Because after revolution, there'll be civil wars. Because this tribe wants to win. And this tribe and tribe. And we'd be like Angola having war after war after war. Would we have been able to survive that? I don't know. Anyway, so let me continue. Short. I'm telling you, the apartheid was better than ANC Democrats. We produced, imported. Today we're buying more from outside. I'm a chicken. Again, we produced, we imported. We imported. Yes. But then look into why that was possible. But again, He's also not wrong because we should be producing and exporting, which I think we are doing quite a lot because, you know, I've traveled to 160 countries and I'm telling you, in a lot of those countries, especially in the Eastern Bloc countries, Albania, even Cuba, which is South America, but even South American countries, I was only buying South African products. I don't even do that in Malaysia. I look at a South African product and it's like, eh, it doesn't even register that it's South African. But the minute I, I left, I leave Malaysia, I'm in other countries, cool, cool. I'm so happy to see, to see cool. Spas, there's spas everywhere. In, I, actually, we do export a lot, but pro, not enough, though, not enough. He's right, there's not enough. But you saw the BRICS summit. They were mentioning that and also, um, especially with the raw materials that uh, Ramaphosa says they're not, we're not going to export raw materials anymore. We're going to export the actual product, which is good because that will create job opportunities, which is good. But then are people, are people going to want to take the jobs? Or are the illegal immigrants, mainly from Zimbabwe, going to take those jobs? Who knows what a mess we're going to be in from your onwards. Well, what a further mess we're going to be in. Obama flooded us with chickens. We importing toothpicks. We had industries. We had textiles. People were working, creating a lane. We had trains. 
things that were built during apartheid. Tamalambe spana la pago pasa fa ben za matak. I'm a fake. Yesterday I was doing the panel. Sorry, there he was speaking his language and I don't understand what he was saying. So that's my little rant and my feelings about the whole situation. I know a lot of you are going to be so upset over this video, but you know what? I couldn't give a flying feather duster because I am sitting here now as a worthy human being. As a free human being not oppressed by white domination to me that is very important and then you will say oh but you don't live in in south africa yeah there's no load shedding where you are uh, i'm in nepal we have 14 hours load shedding nobody complains i don't know why they don't complain um i complain because I'm a guest, I'm on holiday, this is a hotel, I'm living in an apartment, this is an apartment, I pay a monthly fee, so they should have a generator. But I digress. Uh, yeah, but if you feel it's more important to have electricity over the right to vote, over equal rights, over a right to human dignity, over a right to self-worth or viewed as a worthy human if you're okay with being inferior being classed as inferior then i guess that's how it's okay you do you uh that's not me i'm very full of myself i have worth i don't care what you think i have worth and uh but I'm thinking this way this dude is talking, I think it's not, it's not even that he's so much uh, talking about apartheid. At first I thought that, but as the thing was going, I think he sees a communist. He wants that communist system where the people don't have to think. You don't do anything like I saw in Cuba. People in Cuba, especially the young people, they don't do anything. Because education is free, accommodation is free, food is free, everything is free. Healthcare. They don't have to think anything. All they have to do is, is just get up and live. But then the price that they have to pay for that is that they don't have freedom. Like freedom meaning they can't own anything. Everything is owned by the state or partially owned by the state. Uh, not, they own absolutely nothing. Nothing is yours. And then the food you are rationed. Like, you, you, when you work, you can work. I mean, you don't have to work because you get it. Everything is free, so you can just hang around. But uh, there are those who work because uh, when you work, you get a little bit extra. Like the doctor we lived with, he's a cardiothoracic surgeon and a neurosurgeon and a, what is that one? A osteo orthopedic, yeah, orthopedic surgeon. He was about 45 years old. He, he can have these three specialties because, you know, it's free. He could study for free, so it was not a big deal. Very intelligent guy. Uh, he earned $80 per month. But the government gave him a big house. It's a two-story house. I think there were 10 bedrooms on top because that's where we stayed. At the bottom, there were like five like one big kitchen which spanned about five of the bedrooms and it's a big house that's what the government gave him he gets for each family member they get a ration food rations of course health care education all that is free so he, he's fine he drove oh in Cuba everybody drives his old cars but beautiful I love I love those cars and um but in their freedom like the car, we didn't even own that either. But uh, like the money, the $80 he used to get per month, he will buy little things for himself. But then also because there's a lot of sanctions in Cuba, they also restricted on what they can buy. So he couldn't, like he bought my phone. My phone was like, oh, some song that, but it was better than the phone he had. So he bought it from me. Uh, things like that. The other lady bought my husband's slippers. Yeah, so I think this is what he's 
this he's more into communism the only thing is with communism I also again it looks good on paper in real life um, with another story uh, and um, with communism there's, there's going to be restrictions like you're not going to have freedom and you're not going to have but I, he seems to be okay not having freedom because if he's okay with apartheid then he would be okay with not having freedom and uh, yeah and because again communism is also like considered a not really a crime against humanity, but it's not acceptable. And then there'll be a lot of sanctions, like they sanctioned Cuba and uh, what's the other, the North Korea, the communist countries. So, but I guess it's South Africa and, you know, we have to decide, do we want the apartheid? Do we want a nice democracy? And democracy is never going to be nice. There's always going to be issues. There isn't one country in the world that you can show me where people are where the country's perfect doesn't work like that. Sorry, fun fact. And, uh, or if we want communism. Uh, anyway, that's my rant, like I said already. Uh, hate me now. Look at my face. I don't care. Have a good day. Cheers.